subscribe to m code and ring the notification bell to get the latest content last lecture was all about the overview of data engineering so let's dive in and learn about some of the most popular technologies in big data which are hadoop and spark so since we have laid the groundwork now it's time to introduce you to the most important technologies in data engineering which is hadoop and spark so let's start with hadoop first so hadoop also known as the backbone of big data processing world so hadoop is nothing but a distributed data processing platform which comprises of three main components it has the hdfs which is hadoop distributed filing system it is based on google filing system and it is used as a storage layer for hadoop so the data is distributed across the commodity hardware in the in the hdfs so we will discuss that in detail in a bit so the next component is mapreduce the mapreduce is actually the data processing engine of hadoop so mapreduce consists of mappers and reduces processes which splits the huge task so for example let's consider you are processing gigabytes of data at one time so on that purpose you are not able to run that data processing framework on your local machine you have to distribute it to the distributed network which is like hadoop so what mapreduce do is mapreduce first split your big task into smaller chunks of task and distributes them across the clusters and coordinate them to get the aggregated output so mappers is used for mapping the task and reducers will reduce the reduce the output to the required format so that is how mapreduce works and also the third component is hadoop yarn so yarn is nothing but the yet another resource manager so as the name suggests it is a resource management platform for hadoop so it manages how many nodes are getting engaged and how many nodes are free and also coordinates between them so that if let's say if a single machine gets failed it got message to the yarn and then it assigns that task to the another node so it basically is a resource manager which distributes the task across the clusters equally and processes the data in the most efficient way so let's consider you have some big data file so we have a big data file of a 10 gigabytes so let's assume that these are all the transactions so let's say these are the transactions which are coming daily into your system so to able to process this transaction let's say if you want to get insight into your transactions and and leverage that to run your recommendation system and so on so that is not the point here let's say if you have 10 gigabytes of data coming every day it should not be processed on a single machine so what it does is we have the hdfs layer so let's say this is a hdfs so hdfs distributes this file into multiple machines so these machines are nothing but the commodity hardware so why but commodity hardware are used in hadoop because commodity hardware are very cheap and easily available and we can easily replace that if it got failed or anything else and we can add as many of the worker nodes in our cluster so this commodity hardwares are nothing but the worker nodes so let's say our files are stored on this systems and and also if we have some logic or some code let's say if you have a map reduce code so what map reduce does is it splits your task into multiple mapper functions so this mapper jobs will submit to these worker nodes and processes your data to get the aggregated output at the end so that is how hadoop works so if i explain you very simply let's say this is your big data so this is we can say it as a big data so let's say it's a 500 gigabytes of transactions and you want to process it with the help of hadoop so what it will do is we have like multiple map functions so these map functions will submit the jobs to these worker nodes which are running in parallel and they are nothing but a commodity hardware and yarn does is the resource management and it and it checks the health of these resources and it gets it using the heartbeat so it receives the heartbeat from this commodity hardware to know if it fully occupied or available or there is something going on with that node so that is the job of the yarn 
so let's say these are all the map functions and once the mapping is done then comes the reducer phase so our data will be reduced to get us the required output so we can say it say this as a reduce functions so this is a reduce functions and we get our data which is like a no nothing but the aggregated output of this reducer function so let's say if i submit a query to get count of all the transactions so this is how it does it tracks where the data is stored on the cluster because sdfs is nothing but a distributed system so it will get all the data then it processes them individually using this mapper functions and then reduces it to get us the output which is nothing but the count so to get the count of all the records this is what happens under the hood in our hadoop distributed system and there is also one more thing like the name node and the worker node concept so name node is nothing but the leader of all the worker nodes and tracks the progress of all the worker nodes so name node has all the metadata of the process so worker nodes is controlled by the name node so sdfs doesn't directly talk to worker nodes as i have given in this figure but it talks to the name node and name node then communicates that task and distributes them on the worker nodes so this is what happens but to explain you this let's say hdfs is just a distributed platform which is storing your files in the chunks on commodity hardware this is the basic explanation of hdfs and if we talk about mapreduce it is just a data processing platform which splits your big task into smaller chunks and on and submits them on this worker nodes to process it and get us the required output so this is how you can get count of all your transactions as i mentioned earlier so now let's shift our focus to the lightning spark which is like a fast in memory data processing tool in the world of data engineering so this is very important spark is nothing but a revolution of hadoop to process the data in memory so in memory is very important concept here so hadoop nothing but relies on the map reduce where the task gets split up and then distributed across the cluster so it has lot of reading and writing the data meanwhile because each processes has to write the data on local disk temporarily and then read it back so there is a lot of input and output communication of that data which often slows down this process if you are not dealing with huge data then hadoop might not be the right choice for you but in spark it has the in memory data processing which means that it stores the recently accessed data into memory which means in the ram as similar to your computer so due to this it reduces the input output operation and also improves the efficiency of the data processing so it is way more efficient than hadoop if we talk about the data processing because it does that in memory but spark is not just about fast data processing it's about the versatility it provides because writing a map reduce job is very tedious task and it requires high programming knowledge especially in java but in spark you got various apis on which you will be able to write the spark code in any language possible you can write it in r you can write it in python java scala whatever it is because it has a rich set of libraries so at its core it has the spark core which is nothing but resilient distributed data set also referred to as rdd so as the name suggests it is also a distributed data set across your cluster and on top of it you got rich libraries like spark sql mllib so spark sql nothing but give you the capability to submit sql queries on top of your spark on top of your data frame and data frame is nothing but like a sql table having a row and columnar format and also you can have like graphics and mllib libraries to implement machine learning algorithms on top of your data frame so it is very versatile tool and it has in memory data processing that is why spark has taken the tech world by storm and especially in the world of data engineering where every data driven organizations are leveraging big data to get meaningful insights okay so that's it for today i'll see you in the next lecture